Republican counting the final stretch for candidates seeking votes across Ohio. The race for attorney general features the incumbent Richard Cordray facing off against his well-known challenger, former U.S. Senator Mike DeWine. Former Ohio House Speaker John Husted faces Franklin County Clerk of Courts Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy in a battle for Secretary of State. A bruising war is being waged for state treasurer. Incumbent Kevin Boyce trying to fend off well-financed challenger Josh Mandel. And candidates Dave Yost and David Pepper each hope to replace outgoing Auditor of State Mary Taylor. With control of the apportionment board up for grabs, the stakes for both major political parties could not be higher. If it's Ohio politics, it's Capitol Square. From ONN and WBNS 10 TV, serving Central Ohio and the state for more than 60 years, this is Capitol Square. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Capitol Square. I'm Jim Heath. And I'm Jerry Revish. We're nearly a week away from Election Day now. The candidates are out in force, full force, trying to drum up those last-minute votes before campaign 2010 comes to a close on November 2nd. Jerry, we have followed the polls in the governor's race uh, all summer into the fall, and the one consistent is that the race has closed. The question is, really, by how much? Take a look at the latest CNN Time poll released Thursday. This is the first time we've seen the governor in the lead for months. 48% of likely voters say they'd vote for for Strickland, 47% for John Kasich, 3% are undecided. Now, Strickland's one point margin is well within the survey sampling error. But the latest Quinnipiac poll this week shows Kasich with a 10 percentage point lead over Strickland. What's key in both of these polls is that Kasich has a very big lead with independent voters, Jerry. Now, switching to the U.S. Senate race, this one could be over. <laughs> Put a cork this, in it. Yeah, I'm telling you, the CNN Time poll shows Republican nominee Rob Portman with a 55 to 40 percent lead over Lieutenant Governor Lee Fisher with a 3 percent undecided uh, margin there. The latest Quinnipiac University poll also released this week shows Portman with an even bigger lead. In fact, Fisher has been trailing Portman in this poll by roughly 20 points since the fall campaign got underway. Jerry, Lee Fisher is just one of a handful of congressional yeah. Democrats in the state who are in trouble. We keep hearing about that expected Republican tidal wave that could, that could lead to John Boehner becoming the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Fisher and incumbent Representatives Steve Drehaus and Mary Jo Kilroy are the most endangered Democrats this cycle. In fact, national Democrats have written each off financially. Major polls have all three behind and likely to be victims again of that GOP wave. But the problem extends to other Democrats once considered safe. John Bocheri, Zach Space, and Charlie Wilson. While the Republican opponents have trailed in money and name ID, the anti-incumbent wave could push right into these districts, which would signal a huge realignment nationally on election night. That's right. Other statewide offices are up for grabs on election night, too. Coming up, we'll hear from the leading candidates running for Attorney General, Secretary of State, Treasurer, and Auditor. And we'll also turn to our in-studio experts to talk about those races. Joining us today, Julie Carr Smythe with the Ohio Associated Press and Jim Siegel with the Columbus Dispatch. We begin with the race for Ohio Attorney General. Voters will find four candidates on the ballot. First incumbent Democrat Richard Cordray faces Republican challenger and former U.S. Senator Mike DeWine. Two third party candidates also in the running. Robert Owens is the Constitution Party candidate and Mark Allen Feldman is the Libertarian in this race. The winner on November 2nd will serve a four year term beginning in January 2011. A attorney general is the state's chief legal counsel. But the office also performs other duties, so we asked the candidates what should the attorney general's office do to help curb violence and crime in Ohio. Well, I think that the most important thing we do is we provide frontline support to police, sheriffs, and prosecutors in the state. Uh, in my case, we handle all the training of peace officers in the state. We have improved that function in a number of respects, including making training more, training more accessible to law enforcement around the state with regional trainings and putting uh, online training. But also, uh, our crime labs, we have cut the response time uh, for local law enforcement in handling those cases. We have added uh, support for computer computer crimes, which they tell us that they need very much. We've been fighting human trafficking, which is a problem that's often unrecognized but very significant here and everywhere around the country. Uh, just, just a number of things that we can do to make sure that local law enforcement are in a position to do their best job every day. And that's why I believe all seven law enforcement organizations in the state of Ohio, Fraternal Order of Police and six others, have all endorsed Rich Cordray for re-election as Attorney General. What should the Attorney General's office do to help curb violence and crime right here in the Buckeye State? You know, the Attorney General um, works to support the police and prosecutors. 
if there's a crime that is committed uh, in Ohio, the likelihood is the evidence will go be sent by the prosecutor and by police to the state crime lab. Uh, we just have problems there today. Uh, it is kind of a poster child of what's wrong with, with state government. We have to clean it up. If you look at the efficiency level of the state crime lab, uh, it is running about 30% efficiency uh, compared to private crime labs. I'm a prosecutor. I'm a former prosecutor. I will go in and shake it up. And what I will do is bring people from the private sector who are running crime labs that are much more efficient. I will bring them in. I will also talk to the employees who work there. There are many good people who work there that are doing a good job as far as analyzing the evidence, but we need to increase the productivity. That will help deal with the crime problem in the state of Ohio. Now, the operation of the state crime lab has become a major sticking point in this campaign. As you heard, DeWine calls it inefficient. Cordray has argued that he's cleaned it up. Jim? All right, Jerry, uh, this obviously has been a very big issue in this campaign, perhaps the one dominant issue, Jim and Julie. Let me ask you right out of the gate here, I mean, how real is this crime lab issue? Republican prosecutors, seemingly, Jim, are lining up with Cordray on this. Yeah, there's about a half dozen Republican prosecutors in this, around the state who came out and uh, criticized Cordray, criticized the crime lab as being too slow and inefficient. Um, as far as whether or not this is a real issue, I think it is an issue, but you need context to it, as with most things in these campaigns. I mean, Cordray and even the county prosecutors who are who are criticizing him agree with Cordray in that he has made things faster. Mm -hmm. The DNA results are getting done faster uh, than they were before. Um, he has put in robotics and other things to try to make the crime lab work more efficiently. But they're saying it's still not good enough. And I think, but I don't know if it's ever been good enough, to be honest. I mean, you when you're a prosecutor, you've got a case. You want to get this thing solved. You want to get these guys in prison, and you don't want to have to sit around and wait for some state lab, uh, to, you know, 80 miles away to, to finish the job. Right. Right, and it's it it is a, a logical thing for Dewine to bring up a, a comparison with the private sector labs. Obviously, a government lab is going to be somewhat slower for for the reasons that um, you know over time uh, there have been. Um, things built into that system and so it's it's really one of the few things that he has been able as you say to to pinpoint with Cordray who obviously hasn't served a full term uh, was elected in a special election uh, and is is trying to clean up an office there so what well, we will be interesting too to see how uh, DeWine's name ID plays out in the statewide campaign he lost last time out but obviously it's very strong all right Jerry Thanks a lot, Jim. Moving on now to the Secretary of State's office. Three candidates are on the ballot. They are Democrat Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy, Republican John Husted, and Libertarian Charles Earle. The winner on November 2nd will replace current Secretary of State Jennifer Bruner. Now, security of the state's voter registration system has come under a lot of scrutiny in recent elections, so we asked the candidates how they'd improve that. Well, it was very shocking when we read in the Columbus Dispatch that there are 5,800 deceased voters on the voter rolls. Uh, and that creates the opportunity for voter fraud. Uh, I met this morning with uh, people uh, representing businesses that, that do uh, database management. And, and there are ways that we can use existing technology to, to, to change the outdated system that we have to make sure that we're purging the voter rolls of people who shouldn't be on there people that have moved out of state, people who've moved different places, so that we can reduce the number of provisional ballots, which cast a, uh, a, 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 a bit of a, of a taint on the election system to make sure that we've removed uh, deceased people, to make sure that we've re removed uh, duplicates. Uh, by doing these kinds of things, by taking leadership to upgrade the technology, we will restore the security of the election system and make uh, people more confident in the way that we vote in Ohio. What can you do to improve the security of our state's voter registration system? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that comes to mind with, with me is uh, to look at ways to apply 21st century technologies. And I really want to look strongly at uh, online voter registration as long as it can be done securely. That's online voter registration to make sure that the, the potential voter is talking directly to the Board of Elections. Uh, that way you're cutting out the middleman who may be gaming the system or trying to profit by a voter registration programs. I think that that will certainly 
certainly help with security, but there's a, we need to make sure that we eliminate this perception of voter fraud or registration fraud or voter suppression that's out there. From what I understand, there, a lot of people think that, that people are gaming the system, and I believe that we need to make sure that we've got audits and that we've got investigators on board in the Secretary of State's office that can investigate uh, any, any uh, allegation of any of these types of illegal activities. Now, both candidates cite new technology as the key to securing ballots in the future, but O'Shaughnessy takes it a step further with the human aspect of audits and investigators. Jim? Yeah, Jerry, it does lead to that big question of uh, whether or not there's any kind of fraud going on. When you hear about 5,800 uh, dead Ohioans still on the rolls, guys, I mean, obviously bells kind of go off, but Julie, it does lead to the question of how real is that and what kind of purging process do we have? Right. I mean, I think in this race, you see Democrats wanting to preach uh, suppression uh, issues and the fact that they want to ease access to voter registration, make it easier. You see uh, the Republican talking a lot about how we need to be careful of fraud, and, and those two sometimes come up and clash in this race. Um, but I think voters need to look at, as they go to the polls, just sort of do we or don't we have a problem? I mean, there are 5,800 dead people on the rolls. That could just be a clerical thing. We have, in, the, in my knowledge, had, can count on one hand uh, the number of actual fraud cases in the state of Ohio. I just wonder, I mean, with the technology the way it is today, you, you do have to sit and wonder, why can't these voter rolls be updated instantaneously? As soon as you change addresses, you sh your name should be eliminated from your old voter roll and added to the new one. As soon as your death certificate is filed, you should be eliminated. It seems to me there's no reason why this, this, has, why this can't be done yet, and I think that's why both, both candidates are, are kind of latching onto it. I, I will say, though, however, there, and this has been historical over in Ohio and probably in other places, the, the, there is a gap between the perception of voter fraud and actual voter fraud. Actual voter fraud seems to be pretty minimal in Ohio and in other, you know, although I'm sure it happens occasionally, but there is always a perception that's going on. And Jerry, we should point out that this office, always the center of attention in presidential election year, is now just two years away. That's right. Thanks a lot. And coming up on Capitol Square, the leading candidates running for state treasurer talk about ethics and integrity in a campaign that has lacked both. And be sure to check out all of our exclusive on-the-record interviews with the statewide and congressional candidates on our websites, 10TV.com and ONNTV.com. We'll be right back.